My name is Jake Monroe. I'm a soil management specialist for field crops with Omafra based out of Woodstock. So it's mid-July and we're looking at a, a soybean plot where we're evaluating soybean production in roller crimped rye and we're, we're putting it head to head with soybeans that have been grown or basically seeded no-till into rye that was sprayed off earlier in the spring. So we're looking to see if we can make this system work uh, where we seed rye, we crimp it and then we seed soybeans into it and let the rye do the weed control for us throughout the season. The motivation really is um, really for the for the project started with uh, an organic grower coming to me and saying, you know, I, I'm interested in this. Um, we've just transitioned to organic. We don't like the amount of tillage that we're we're having to do for for our soybeans. Uh, you know, we're growing good soybeans, but it, it's we're taking a lot of labor and it's taking a lot of fuel. So the concept with cover crop based organic no-till with using a roller crimper is that you, you, you save a lot of labor and you put those resources into cover crop seed, into, uh, into using a crimper um, for, for terminating that cover crop um, and, and just you manage the system differently, um, ultimately to you know, save time on the farm, but also to help improve soil health. The soybeans that were planted into the crimped rye are at at about the V2 or V3, so second to third trifoliate stage, um, they're oh, I'd say maybe maybe eight inches tall. Uh, and right beside them, to my right, the the soybeans that were planted into the rye that was sprayed off earlier in the spring are, you know, a fair bit further ahead. They're actually in full flower now. Um, they're I'd say about a foot tall, darker, greener, just generally looking better, and 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 not that far off of closing canopy on these 15-inch rows. So. Not surprising, that's, that's really what we consistently have seen over the last couple of years with this system. Um, it just takes a lot of energy for those beans to push up through that mulch. The mulch is also, the rye when it was growing took up a lot of nitrogen. Um, and so those soybeans uh, in their early growth are, are a little bit slower and it's, you know, it's cooler soil conditions. And so there's multiple reasons, but the important thing at this stage and standing here in mid July is that We've got an adequate stand. And the other important thing to note is, is the mulch doing a good job of, of keeping weeds suppressed. And I think here at the, at the demo farm, we've, we've got examples of good suppression and poor suppression. And in, uh, in this strip here to my left, we've got some weeds that are coming through, particularly grassy weeds. Uh, the strip to my right, closer to the road, um, actually was a much thicker stand of rye due to the, the previous crop. And that rye was, was thicker and as a result the mulch is doing an excellent job of, of suppressing weeds and there's, there's very few to be found. So those are the things we're looking for. Adequate stand and do we have uh, weeds that are poking through at this stage. What we've seen so far is that it can work but it's not guaranteed to work. And as one of the growers who, who has cooperated on this project with us and has now about four years of experience with this system, has told us it's it's certainly not something to necessarily just jump right into, particularly if you're a grower who's um, only got limited experience with cover crops. Um, it it uh, it did work certainly quite well at a number of sites in 2019, including this uh, grower I'm speaking about in Perth County, who had two separate fields um, yielded in the high 30s to the high 40s, along with the successes we saw at the full full fields in Perth County. We did have, I would say, a success at an organic um, hog farm that participated last year and they ended up getting about 38 bushels per acre with the organic no-till cover crop system uh, relative to about eight, eight to nine bushels more with their regular very good looking 30 inch um, tilled beans. So um, that to us was promising. Um, and those same cooperators are participating this year and off and their their no-till beans are off to a great start so we're we're cautiously optimistic that, that we can narrow that yield gap and and get at least competitive or at least within maybe five bushels of the 30 inch beans background fertility and also background weed pressure at different sites really really plays a big role in in um, in determining how successful this system is. This system is, uh, is really predicated on having a, an, a good, even, strong 
stand of a fall rye or cereal rye. If you're new to this or trying maybe a portion of a field, um, thinking about what's a field that has a reasonable amount of you know, perennial weed pressure, because rye does much better on, on annuals than, than perennials. If you don't have decent or at least moderate background fertility, and I'm really talking about, you know, good organic matter, but specifically good phosphorus and potassium levels, um, that rye just, it doesn't tiller as well, it doesn't get as thick, and that res just results in a, in a thinner stand and a, and a thinner mulch. So we saw that at a number of sites last year where that rye just didn't have the nutrients it needed to give us the, um, the stand that we needed for it to do a good job um, as a mulch and as a weed suppressant. Where this system can um, not work well is if we get a very, very dry spring. So if we perhaps think back to 2016, a very dry spring, very dry May and, and start of the summer. Um, that's a situation, though we didn't have any plots out, but I would be very nervous with a full stand of thick rye sucking moisture in soil that's already dry. So if you're trying this system and you you see that you're going into May and you have already dry conditions and you've got forecast say in mid-May for continued very dry hot conditions um, it's important to be flexible and 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 move back or go to plan B and, and in that case that would be you know working that that uh, rye in and going back to you know tilled beans or if you're a conventional grower spraying that rye off early before it gets it gets ahead of you. When it comes to crimping um, you know, making sure that you're not going in too early. So in Ontario, we have to be a bit, maybe a bit more patient than our neighbors to the south where they might be crimping in late May. Typically what we've seen is that kind of that first week of June is typically um, when the rye is ready to be crimped. Um, having enough weight in, in the roller crimper to make sure you're laying it down flat. And in some cases, as we found this year, uh, a second pass the opposite direction really helps make sure that that rye has been crimped. And that's what was done, done here. Finally, soybean seeding. We've had a success um, with both uh, on farm with drills and, and on our small plots with, with a planter well set up for no-till conditions. Um, but it's really important to you know, have well-maintained equipment, sharp, sharp openers, good closing wheels. So again, maybe a notch closing wheel, cast closing wheel. We've used the, a Don Gage Tine closing wheels this year, which did an excellent job. Um, closing that slot, which can of course can be a bit more challenging in a in a, in a mat of cover crop. And finally, making sure that we're giving that soybean the best chance for success by bumping up our seeding rate in, in this kind of more challenging environment. So for organic growers, close to 300,000 seeds per acre is really what, what we're zeroing in on and what we've seeded our plots at and what I would recommend at this point. Um, and research in New York State has found somewhere between you know 250 to 300,000 to be an optimal seeding rate for this system. Um, for conventional growers who are looking to, to try this system to maybe go down to a single pass of herbicide in, the se in season, um, uh, you, you don't necessarily need as thick a mulch, but you're still hopefully gonna get a, a reasonable one. Um, you, you don't need to necessarily be at 300,000, but, but you still certainly wanna bump your rate up because you're, you're seeding in this case, likely into June, um, and you've again, got a more challenging environment. Winter wheat is not a good fit following soybeans grown this way. And that's because you've got a thick mulch to contend with and that will still be around in the fall. And secondly, um, if only the roller crimper has been used to terminate the rye, it's highly likely that you will have some volunteer rye. And you can even see some to my left here um, in this field that's been crimped twice. Um, so that can cause issues, of course, in your in your uh, winter wheat crop uh, with contamination. So for those reasons, winter wheat is not a good fit and that's absolutely something to, to think through before, before trying this out. Um, there are a couple of, you know, different options in terms of, in terms of crops after and some of the growers uh, who are part of the project um, have, you know, seeded peas afterwards. Uh, another grower uh, did a new seeding uh, of alfalfa and so there's there's certainly options, um, but we, we have to maybe adjust our thinking in terms of our typical corn, soybean, wheat rotation if we're going to be uh, growing soybeans this way.